this one is greater than, just like it sounds, we're going to take in two numbers and say whether the first one is greater than the second one. It'll return true if the first one is greater. It'll return false if, this, if the um, second one is greater. And if they're the same, it will return false. So we have our examples up here. They're pretty straightforward. Where would you start on something like this? Ooh. So um, I think... Uh, they should be numbers. To, yeah, to okay. Start Generic constraints, always a great place to start. So I think there's no way to do an equality, uh, or the only thing you can do actually is an equality check, right? With extents. Well, uh, remember from well, the last, so from anyone who didn't see the last two videos that the three of us did together, we did flatten and flatten depth. And when we did flatten depth, we used a counter. Yeah. yeah. Um, or we just call it count. Mm -hmm. And this is how it looks. So you it's just an array of them. ones. Watch the previous video on flatten if you're if you're interested more on this. But so we could abuse that. There mm -hmm. is a solution that doesn't use that, and I'll show it to you. But it's pretty it's pretty complicated. Um, okay. What do you think? I think this is a good uh, start. Yeah. Okay. So just exactly like we had before. We're always going to check, like the way to get the number out that we want to check is by doing this. And we're going to say extends. And then what would you put here? I think uh, A, mm -hmm. for instance. Yeah, absolutely. And then get the counter to the equal number of A, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So oh, I shouldn't use true and false here. Uh, <laughs> I should use like never because uh, we're going to get confused if I use true and false. So in the true branch, branch. If the count extends A, what should we return? Um, then we need to... Uh, so it's like we've... Don't we've, we the second counter for B? So the, the second... Yeah, so we would check the second one in the true branch, right? Because if the length... So the length is kind of like what is the number we're checking against? Do you see what uh, I mean? Yeah. Eventually, let's do this one. Uh, it, I think it'll make more sense to see them both next to each other. B. So if we do this, then we're going to see some value is going to go there. And then if not, we have to recurse in order to increment the counter. So we'll pass. Of course, we're going to pass in A and B. Those never change. And then we're going to give our counter. Oop, not what count queuing <laughs> strategy. We're getting all these weird autocompletes. Okay. Count and then one, and then we're going to kind of recurse it. So I have a trick that I'd like to show you. This is what I do because I'm a terrible engineer some days. Some days if I don't know exactly what to say or what to do, I will just brute force the problem. So this one is supposed to equal true and it equals B mm -hmm. because I put in, it's like a bad value. I put in B there. I could think for a long time about how to solve this and I could stare at this, but I have a test up there and I can abuse the fact that I have that test in order to actually just put in true there and see what happens. Now this test passes. All the ones that are supposed to be true pass. So then I can come yeah. in here and see greater than returns uh, with for A3 returns A, but it's supposed to return false. So I'll just put in false there. Now, some oh, people would yeah. say that's cheating. I think that it's not. I think, <laughs> I think so too, yeah. So if you store, if you stared at it long enough, I think it would be clear to see that. Oh, okay. I just know. It's making sense, right? We're doing, yeah. <laughs> we're we're okay. kind of incrementing this counter a certain number of times to check. It's kind of yeah. like checking a almost like like we're incrementing us the counter for every step that we go and that's like yeah. a number and so we have like a number that we can check against the number it's confusing because usually with math you can just check two numbers against each other you don't need a third one that's a recursive like a yeah. looping copy of the but mm -hmm. here we are there's no way to do number there's really no good way to do number arithmetic in typescript uh so we resort to stuff like this yeah. there is so, uh, another yeah. solution which is really something and i want to show it so um, it's called 
the the person on GitHub, I, I I usually don't put somebody's GitHub handle because many of these are have, have solutions, truly do genuinely have solutions from many different people that are the same. So I don't know who to credit. This this one is unique. So wow. we're not gonna we're not gonna solve it using this, but I want to talk through very quickly uh, kind of how it works and what it does. So from the bottom, let's go all the way down. All of this code is to solve greater than, but it does it in a way without using the array like accumulator. It uses string yeah. manipulation and it doesn't hit, there's a recursive limit on how many times you can recurse in TypeScript oh. types. And this doesn't hit that limit. So you can do massive numbers using this one and it will work. So oh, wow. greater than we have A extends number, B extends number. So this is very similar to what we had before. And there's no accumulator here like we had. And then immediately we're passing it to a helper. So we're mm -hmm. saying greater than helper. And notice this syntax here that I have highlighted will convert the number to a string in TypeScript. Mm -hmm. So we're converting in both numbers A and B to a string and we're asking does does it extend one? So uh, by convention when you do stri when you do comparisons a lot of times one will mean greater than uh, and zero will mean is it zero will mean the same and negative one will mean less than. So uh -huh. this person used those conventions it's not necessary but they did. And then in this helper you see here they're storing values uh, up here for use. We don't actually need to do something like you could do. You could do something like this. You could swap them out. Um, same comp and then get rid of these extra state. It's possible, but it's a kind of nice thing for readability. So string length compare is a function they made. Same length compare is a function they made. So um, <laughs> it's saying if, if the string length is if it's zero, meaning they're the same, then return it. Otherwise, do uh, do you know? Otherwise, I'm sorry. If it's the same, return the same comparator. Otherwise, return this one. I understand this is like a lot, but just go with it for a moment. Here's the string, the same length comparator. So we're grabbing the values out and basically going through digit by digit and comparing them. And they have a function here, or I think of it as a function. They have a type that they made that does digit comparison and it does it like wow. sort of in a brute force manner. So we're saying does A extend B and we can do that now because they're strings, right? Yeah. So digit is just an, a union of every possible of the 10 digits in our number system. So then we go mm -hmm. through down this list and we check to say, okay, does A extend, z fine, does A extend zero, does A extend one, does A extend two, does A extend three, four, five, and then we have we're eliminated all of the other options for what B could be by these points. So these lists change in size. So we see, you know, does A extend B? We're just checking 0, 1, 2 because the other ones are checked later. Um, I, I'm, I don't want to go too deep. I, I spent like almost an hour looking at this, not an hour, maybe 45 minutes looking at this the other night. It's, I found it so interesting to understand how it works. But you spent an hour reading it. I'm just very curious in how much time the author spent on writing. I know. <laughs> well, I also <laughs> formatted it a lot. This is not the way this person formatted it. And for these challenges to fit on the screen, I need I only have 60 characters to work with. So <laughs> part of the time was spent formatting it and trying to make it look normal compared to the other challenges that we're doing in this series. Uh, I, I don't really care how people format their TypeScript, but I have a certain kind of style that I've, ado I've adopted for the series to, to fit short. Uh, distances, but anyway, this is the this is the this is the solution. And uh, if you're interested, cool. go check this guy or gal out or whoever they are. Uh, Zin, I don't know. I'm not going to pre pretend I know how to say that. Zin Chao Beta, I don't know. Something like that. Something I like guess. that. Pretty pretty Great cool job. answer. All right. <laughs> Very creative. Uh, the, I gotta, yeah, please. Um, uh, how do you take uh, performance into consideration? In these kind of things? Uh, who knows? Uh, I think yeah. I think for something <laughs> like this. Some of them, sometimes you see people talking in the examples about performance and which one performs better or than, than the other. And to be clear, if anybody's curious what we mean by performance, it's like we're talking about uh, we're talking about the like ability of TypeScript to compile at a certain perf time you know, amount of time. TypeScript is type erased, so type erasure, so it'll be gone by the time runtime is going on. Uh, but of course, if you're in your editor and you know you put TypeScript in, into a tough situation, it can slow down your workflow. But no, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. If anybody knows, please comment below. <laughs>